Hi everyone, and welcome to a Princess Connect video in Mistakes to Avoid. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. Once we hit 7,500 subs, we will be doing a giveaway. All right, let's go into here and talk about the first thing to avoid. One of the first things to avoid is refining gear, it's specifically below rank three. The reason why is because it's very, very mana intensive, right? So for example, it cost me 24,000 mana. Some of you are like, you have 84,000, you can spare some. Watch what happens when I raise this character specifically, right? If I click optimize, it costs me 75,000 to raise a brand new character. And mind you, they only have one skill available. Each skill you can actually enhance and it costs mana. So imagine me trying to raise a, a brand new character that you just pulled and you can't raise them because you don't have enough mana. Mana is an extremely valuable resource that you do not want to mess around with, all right? And then it'll be a reoccurring thing throughout the video. Now, the next thing that you want to like look at is why I don't want you to refine is look at the skills. Unlocks at rank two, unlocks at rank four reason why you don't want to be stuck at rank 3 even if you have higher stats is because you won't unlock this third ability that unlocks at rank 4, all right? And if you're wondering what ranks are, feel free to check out my global beginner guide, but pretty much ranks are the equipment like rank that you are at. And just note that equipment is essentially like a permanent asset to the character. Note that I cannot unequip gear, all right? So if you think that you can like unequip this shield and put it on someone else, no, that's not how it works. It's a permanent Thing. So don't mess around with your gear either. Once you get to rank four, feel free to refine or you can wait a little bit longer. And the reason why is because you can sit on this rank to raise your skills, right? The reason why you even refine in the first place is because you are stuck on a story stage and you want to push it. You want to raise your stats a little bit. You're like, okay, it's worth it to increase my HP by double and my physical attack and physical defense by double for 24,000 mana, right? That's that's like the thing but honestly my best advice to you is if you can try to just farm all of the gear out and try not to refine or if you do refine make sure to be selective on what gear you refine like the best thing to refine would probably be tp regen just because you know tp is going to be the thing that triggers your union burst and you want to trigger your union burst as many times as possible to you know deal some damage like for example susana 6364 all right the next thing that you want to do is you don't want to build too many healers in the beginning of the game for example i built yui and then i also built chica now the thing is with these two characters and the why you don't build healers in the beginning is just because their heals don't scale properly in the beginning all right 538 HP and for example Yui she I think hers is like around 400 ish it's not enough to justify a heal for all characters and later on their heals will deal like you know it'll actually heal a lot more and healers are more important in the late game and not to mention with higher ascensions just because it'll just scale a lot better in the early game i'm pretty sure you guys have noticed but the heals are really really subpar it's better to look into a character like yukari pretty much one of like the best characters in the game because look at this her heal is almost double 862 and that's something that's worth looking at plus it heals a particular ally with the lowest HP. I would much rather heal someone with low HP than heal the entire party. Like for example, if my backline, Susana, that's where she's pretty much located, if she's healed and she's topped up on HP, what was the point of me healing? I'd rather heal Pecorine, who's like about to die, give her a really huge boost, than heal the entire party and then just watch Pecorine pretty much die, right? So this rolls around to my next thing. Don't build too many supports, all right? And you can build, you know, Kokoro and Yukari at the same time. The thing is, is because they have two different abilities. For example, Yukari or Yukari has barrier. She can also provide a heal and she can be a TP battery, which is what they call, you know, characters that can pretty much recover TP, right? And just know it's the member with the lowest amount of TP. It's not just everyone. The thing is with Kokoro, is that she increases speed and she also heals herself while also boosting, you know, some stats, right? The thing is, is I had Monica and I pulled her and I put Monica and Kokoro and Yukari on the same team, which sounds good on paper, but the problem is, is Monica raises speed as well. So, and she deals a little bit of damage. What happens here is that 
Monica, because she increases speed, right? Specifically speed and some stats. And Kokoro does the exact same thing almost. It pretty much conflicts with the way your team operates. You don't want two people doing the same thing. See, she grants them, you know, attack. And then she also grants some speed while also boosting physical attack. And then she does some damage on the side. I would pick Monica out of the two. And it's one of those things where you have to pay attention to your supports and make sure that you don't raise characters that have the exact same ability. Now, it's completely fine, obviously, for like, you know, a DPS. It's fine for to have multiple DPSs who have like all damage abilities, but it does not work the same way with supports. You don't want two people like, you know, making characters faster. It just doesn't make sense because it would be much better to build like a DPS like Susana who can deal more damage. In the early game, I think a lot of you have noticed is you can't out tank like most of the maps because the monsters will just burst you down. Your tank can't take the heat and you just end up dying. So the best thing to do, build DPSs, slam like at least three of them ideally, and then you have one tank like Pecorine if that's the only one you have, and then you slam like a backline, you know, supporter or mid supporter like Monica, or you run double support like Monica and Yukari, right? You just don't want to put a healer who doesn't really add any value, like right now, currently, currently, all right? Yui is a SS tier fantastic character in the late game. She is phenomenal, but right now we're in the early game and her heals don't do anything and her flower guard is pathetic. No offense. No offense, all right? It's just like the truth right now in the very beginning. Watch later on when things like we have more access to resources and we can level up characters much more frequently. If we have more access to mana, everything will be okay, all right? So the next thing is going to be, please do not ignore your tank. Please do not ignore your tank. You need to build your tanks and ideally, hopefully you can ascend Pecorine or you know, get Miyako as soon as possible, right? Miyako is going to be this character. She's currently the best story tank in the game because she blocks physical damage. Now, I think if, if you haven't noticed already, if you go into the main quest and then you go ahead and like click a, a map of any, you're going to know if you click and hold, it says physical right there, right? Click and hold, it does healing, click and hold, physical, click and hold, physical. Most of the map is physical. Most people are running like physical, like DPS, so pretty much this makes Miyako like ahead of everyone because she reduces physical damage. Now, some people like to run Kuka. Kuka is actually pretty good in a, you know, PVP. But the thing is, is with Kuka, is she raises her magical defense. I know it says that absorbs physical damage, but she's actually a magical like DPS like soak. So don't try to build her as a physical defense, like, you know, tank. It doesn't work. It's best to build like Pecorine or just flat out build Miyako because she's like the best tank in the game currently. Or if you're like super lucky, you have Nozomi and then, you know, you can tank with her. I wish I had her. She has a taunt ability and it's overpowered. Right now, like in, in some case, in our current meta, she is the best, like one of the best characters. But, you know, later on she'll fall off, but it's going to be a long time before we get six star characters and she's going to fall off, right? It's it's going to be a while. Or actually, June will replace her in story mode, so never mind, it's not going to be that long. Whenever June releases, she's going to get completely, like, ousted on, well, not ousted, but she won't be as good for story mode. I'll talk about her in, like, a future video, but focus on raising a tank, right? Don't ignore Pecorine. Please do not ignore Pecorine. Raise her to at least two star. You can build Lima. Uh... I feel like Lima is actually pretty good for PvP as well, but I just like the way Pecorine works because she can actually heal herself during like mid battle. You can build either or, right? Lunchtime, heal like 1011 HP. That's a really good thing. Plus, she raises her magic defense. But in the end, it's all based off of personal preference. There's no end all be all like tank. Why Miyako is so good is because she has insanely high physical defense, right? No, her magical defense is like, you know, 100 compared to 165. The next thing is going to be sticking to one damage type. You don't want to mix and match your attack type on teams. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't build magical DPS while having a physical team. That just means you will have a magical alternative team but I highly recommend in the beginning, you know, focusing on one damage type so that you don't have to juggle a lot of different, you know, DPS types in the very beginning. Just note that, you know, Olam characters do exist. So for example, if you go into Grotto, 
You go to EXP Quest, there's golems in this area, so you're going to need a magical DPS just to be aware of. So if you want to raise a one magical DPS for EXP Quest specifically, then, you know, that wouldn't hurt whatsoever because this thing, it says physical defense, and now I am suffering because I can't kill this thing because I only have physical DPS. And that's also something to look into is having magical attack you know, teams, having physical attack teams, just don't mix and match the teams, all right? Also, another thing to technically look at, this is the mistake that I made so many times. You just saw technically one of the things is read the read what the monsters do. For example, this one is magical defense. Don't bring like, you know, magical characters into a fight. Like you also saw right here, it says short ranged attacks. And then for example, this one is a living cannon, short ranged attacks. So this means you bring a character that can take short range damage. Sometimes you're going to notice on the map, there's going to be like moments where it's like, I think it's these guys. Yeah, they have like mid range attack and all of a sudden Kokoro is dying. Read some of the monster abilities and then shift around the characters so that, you know, you can avoid some characters dying too early. It's all because of the fact that not every single map is built equally. All right. There's some monsters that hit short range. And then there's these douchebags who hit mid range. And then next thing you know, your entire mid line just dies out of nowhere. And then you're like, what the heck happened? So make sure to just look at the monster, check out the map, see what they're doing. That way, when you get stuck, you know why. All right. The next thing is going to be, we're going to go ahead and hit like start right here. We're just going to tackle the stage for the sake of it. And we're going to begin the battle. Of course, you shouldn't play the game on auto if you're pushing stages. And the only reason why I say that is because you don't want to trigger a heal. You don't want to do damage just for the sake of doing damage, right? I, one of the things that I like to do in like the beginning stages is I don't like using my ults unless I have to in, in like the first stage, unless I have to. But for this case, like it should be okay. Pecorine should live from all of this. On the next stage, I like to completely burst people down and like do all of my ulties because by the time like everything's done and triggered, Everyone will be half dead, you know, I, I don't have like a headache, and my TP gauge will build a lot faster, right? Pecorine might die on this map because of my mistakes, oh well, my bad. Sorry Pecorine, she's one of my favorite characters by the way, and I highly recommend like watching the anime. And of course here, I'm not going to use my ults on the single monster, right? AI would be like, yeah, kill the crap out of that thing, and it's like, no, it's like, that's a huge waste, you know what I mean? That is a huge waste. Let's go ahead and get this going. The thing that I wanted us to show is the damage report at the end of a stage is going to be really important because it's going to show whether your team is actually doing what it's supposed to do, i.e. a DPS is actually dealing damage, a support is actually providing support because I made the mistake of, you know, like I said, running too many supports and next thing you know, no one was dealing damage. Of course, the thing is that you can run into is you know you don't know what someone does or you don't have the ability to pull more and you have to run those characters it's just something that i want us to be aware of so for example susana my backline dps she did the most damage which is pretty obvious right and then my frontline and yukari you know pecorine died but she's a tank she's not supposed to deal damage kari's you know she's not supposed to deal damage monica is supposed to deal damage because she is a support dps you know, Makoto, obviously, she's a DPS, so she should deal damage. And Susana should definitely hit the hardest because she crits and her physical attack is absolutely outrageous. All right, make sure to view the story so you can collect some gems. That's definitely a huge thing. Make sure to pretty much place all of your furniture and don't forget to upgrade your furniture because this furniture, while it's not a big deal, you just saw I got 10,500 stamina. That's 10,500 I didn't have before. So that's super important, all right? Anyways, if there's anything that I missed, you know, I, I know a lot of experienced people sometimes watch my videos and run into it. Feel free to place those comments down below. But anyways, that's it for today's video. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, follow me on Twitch, follow me on Twitter. Once we have 7,500 subs, we'll be doing another giveaway. And thanks so much for watching. See you in the next one.